Hi, hello, I am the Cyber Reef Guru. Thank you so much for watching. Today, I am going to walk you through the process from start to finish on taking a design, turning it into toolpaths, and generating the G code you need to run your CNC. So this video is specifically designed for new users who have not been through the process before and want to get up and running with their CNC. So I am going to use Inventable Easel for this particular project to show you how to use that software. I have a video already of going through Easel and Carbide Create. If you want to see that video, I will link it above and link it below. But let's go ahead and get cut over to the computer. I'm going to show you how to find an image, how to get it into Easel to create the tool pass, and then get off and running with your G-code. Let's go ahead and cut over to the computer. All right, so here we are over at the computer, and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to find an image that we want to use for the inlay for our project. So the way that I start doing this is I generally go out to images.google.com, which we will go to right now, and I just do a search, a keyword search for things that I'm interested in. So for this project, I want to do a pig inlay on the cutting board. I will likely also do a chicken inlay for a different cutting board. Uh, so let's go ahead and start with pig. And I generally search for SVGs. SVG stands for Scalable Vector Graphic. That is the easiest format to bring into your CAD and your CAM programs. Uh, so, but if you do find a PNG or a JPEG, you can also manipulate those as well into vector graphics. So if you're interested in that specific process, please leave your comments down below and I will do a video on that as well. All right, so looking at the screen here, you see lots of different varieties. Uh, I wanna caution you, uh, some of these images have licensing agreements associated with them. So if you find something on Etsy or if you find something on a pay website, please check the licensing terms specifically for what you wanna use it for. So if you wanna productize it or use it in something you're gonna sell, please make sure the license are good for that purpose. So for CNC work, I usually select Silhouette here to give me a nice high contrast image you can see these are essentially all black and white or single colors that makes it a lot easier to uh, turn it into your CNC project so looking at all these different pictures here there's obviously they kind of sort of all look similar um, I'm going to go ahead and just select the first one here because it is from a site that it says it is SVG. So let's click on that. So you no longer can download files directly from Google. You do have to go to the originating site. So I just want to caution you, make sure you have some sort of virus protection or some sort of plugin on your browser that protects you from malicious sites. There is some uh, pretty sketchy stuff out on Google. So just pay close attention to what you click on when you click on some of these images. But I'm gonna go ahead and say visit here. It's gonna take me to the website. Uh, and good news is uh, looks like you can download the SVG directly. You don't have to manipulate any sort of those bitmap images. So I'm gonna go ahead and click download, download that image here, right there, boom. And then we're gonna cut over to Easel and we're gonna start our project. All right, so here we are in Easel. This is the main screen. If you already have an account, you can go ahead and sign in. If you do not have an account, just select Create New Account. Fill in all the information and it'll create an account for you. I'm gonna go ahead, enter my credentials and we're gonna log in and see the landing page. So when you first log in, it's gonna present you with this screen. It's gonna show you some feature projects across the top and then all the projects that you have created previously. Obviously, if you're a new user, you won't have anything there, but I do have a number of my projects that I've created in the past here. So to start our adventure, let's go ahead and select new project and it's gonna create a new project for you. So I have already done a video kind of detailing all the ins and outs of the user interface. I'm not gonna do that now. So in this case, I'm just gonna give you a super quick high level overview. On the left hand side of the screen here, we have our design space. On the right hand side, we have our preview for what the design is gonna look like on the actual material we've selected. You have a toolbar on the side here and the menu system across the top. Down at the bottom, you define your different work pieces, which we will get to in just a minute. Over on the right-hand side, this is where you set most of your cut parameters. And so things like the size of the wood that you're using, the bit that you're using, and then a specific information about your tool pass. Again, we will get to all that in just a minute. So I'm gonna first start by renaming our project here. I'm gonna select the untitled here and type in pig cutting board and say close. 
and it's gonna rename the project. The next thing that I wanna do is I wanna go ahead and I want to create two more work pieces, and I will explain why in just a minute, but to do that, we're gonna select the plus down here at the bottom, and then select the plus down here. And then I want to rename the work pieces so I know what I am working on. So we'll select this little drop down arrow, select rename, I'm gonna call the first one main, the second one I am going to call inlay, and then the third one I am going to call pocket. There you go. And so go back over to main here. Uh, now, the size of the main isn't uh, terribly interesting to us right now because we're going to actually use the inlay and the pocket for the tool pass. But uh, the main is where I like to put my artwork that is essentially unmodified from the inlay settings. So let's go ahead and insert our SVG. It is super easy with easel. We select project. We say import SVG. It's going to open a window. I'm going to select the one that I just downloaded here. So select boom. There you go. And I'm going to scroll out here a little bit. You can see that the pig that we downloaded is just a wee bit larger than our workspace. That's okay. We will get to changing that in just a minute. But if you do want to rescale it, you can see this little window here that says shape and cut. So under the shape, it tells you the current size of your image. So it is uh, 26 inches tall by 14 inches wide. So if you want to keep the aspect ratio, you select this little uh, chain locking thing here. And so I'm going to go ahead and change the width to be 14 inches and you can see it scaled it automatically. Don't worry about the size of the image being bigger than the workspace right now. We will get to that in just a minute. So selecting the inlay here, the inlay workspace. Now the wood that I have for the inlay is eight inches tall and 24 inches wide. So we will go over here. We're going to say select that wood. It happens to be walnut. I'm going to scroll down until I find walnut. I am going to say that it is 24 inches wide and it is eight inches tall and it is 0.123 inches thick. So I'm going to say, okay, there you go. And now that sets the size of the inlay. Now you can see the design space has changed in size and then the preview is changed in size. For the pocket, we are going to put a pocket on the actual cutting board that we have. So we're going to select the wood species again. I happen to have a maple um, cutting board. And so we're going to select hard maple in this case. It is 20 inches wide by 12 inches tall and is 1.5 inches in thickness. So we'll select that. And so, all right, we have the size of our cutting board, which you can see here. If I scroll the window over, this is the size of the cutting board. And then selecting the inlay, this is the size of the inlay wood. Super cool. So let's go back to our main design space here. I'm gonna scroll this window over and zoom in a little bit. And now let's go ahead and create our inlay. In Easel, it is super, super, super easy. And if you are ever doing any sort of inlay work, I do recommend Easel. It is a lot easier than a lot of the other programs. So to get there, what you do is you select this little Lego looking icon. That is the application area. And it's right there at the top. The inlay generator is one of the featured tools that you have in Easel. Now you can scroll down and find it uh, uh, down here lower in the list if you want as well. You also have an image tracer here where you can take that PNG or those JPEGs, turn them into vector art as well. But in this case, we're going to select image generator. Now make sure that you have your image selected on the uh, your design space. If you don't, when you select the inlay generator, uh, that it will not do anything. So make sure you have what you want to create an inlay out of selected before you select the app. So what you see as a screen here is it gives you a preview on the right hand side and some settings on the left hand side. The first thing it asks for is the bit size. So in this case, we are going to use that eighth inch bit or 0.125 inches. Uh, and then it's going to ask you for a tolerance. Now the tolerance really depends on how rigid your machine is. I have found with the Shape Oco, the X-Carve and the uh, Onefinity that 3 thou is pretty good. For the X-Carve, if the belts aren't quite tight, I would tell you to maybe bump that tolerance up to uh, uh, four thou or five thou. Uh, but for one of the newer machines or something that is properly uh, tuned, 3000 seems to be working well for me right now. So I'm going to go ahead and just accept these as defaults and select import. Now, what it has done is it has created two more vectors on your canvas. And so one of them is a profile cut that we will use to create the inlay that goes into the cutting board. The other one is the pocket that the inlay will go into. So 
Right now they are both selected, so I'm gonna hit uh, Control X or Command X. I am gonna click the inlay workspace. I am gonna paste that there. Uh, and so the inlay is this profile here, and then the pocket is this dark one, which I'm gonna hit Control X. Command X and then put it over here on the pocket workspace. So going back to the inlay workspace, let's go ahead and select it and slide that down here. We will uh, scroll out a little bit, zoom out I should say. And what we wanna do is we wanna make sure that this profile is kinda sort of in an area where we're not gonna lose any of the material and everything is gonna be lined up properly. So we'll kinda get it near the edge there, but it fits neatly into the wood that we have, which again is eight inches tall. Now, you might be asking yourself, hey, what are these little yellow things here? These are tabs. So if you didn't have some way of holding your material down, when it was done with the profile, that piece would just break free. Generally speaking, if it breaks free while you're cutting, it's gonna fly into the bit and it's essentially gonna destroy itself. It's either gonna destroy the uh, holding mechanism that you have or it's gonna destroy the inlay itself. So you wanna hold it down some way. So you can use a traditional blue tape and super glue method if you wanted or some double-sided tape or you can use tabs. In this example, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna leave the tabs in. Uh, you can always uh, opt to change it later if you want. So when I use tabs, I generally put the tabs in areas where I think the uh, where the um, the profile might break free or might be a little bit sketchy so I usually put them on some curved areas uh, like this here uh, I like having one on big open areas here as well and then we will put one on the belly right here and now you can change the number of tabs that you have if you go under cut here it says use tabs and then you can uh, set the geometry for the tabs and you can increase the number so we'll change it to six for example so that we can put one down here in the leg and then maybe one here near the nose of the pig. That should give us more than enough holding power. And so right now the length of the tab is a quarter of an inch. That's pretty decent. The height is a 0.08. Um, that's okay for walnut. Um, walnut's a little bit brittle, so I might wanna make them a little bit bigger, but there's enough of them so it shouldn't be too much of an issue. If you do have a super brittle material, you do wanna make your tabs a little bit taller so they don't break free by accident, but they're fairly wide, so we're just gonna go ahead and leave it the way that it is now. Now if we scroll back over here and kind of uh, uh, show you the preview, what you can see is it's just gonna cut the outline of the pig. And so that's what you want. That is the wood that you're gonna take and you're gonna stick into your pocket. So let's go ahead and get over to the pocket operation. And so over here we have our pocketing uh, from the inlay generator. I'm gonna scroll out a little bit and uh, we've already set the size of the workpiece, but what we want is we want that pocket to be kind of in the center of that cutting board. So the easiest way to do this, Easel makes it super easy, under edit here, you select center to material. And it literally puts it in the middle of your material, which is super convenient. Many of the other programs don't have this feature, so you kind of have to eyeball it yourself. But I really like how easy Easel makes it easy. So. Let's go ahead and select our cut parameters here as well. You can see that it is by default going to make the cut 0.123 inches deep, and that's pretty good. Um, I generally, however, recommend when you're doing inlay that it, you want it to be a little bit proud of the surface. So it's a lot easier to uh, sand the inlay down than to sand the entire cutting board down to the inlay if the inlay is a little bit thinner for some reason or another. So I would maybe recommend maybe making it just a little bit less deep. So making it um, point uh, one to one inches should be fine. That's really only the difference of two thou, but it might make the difference at the end of the day. All right, so now we have our profile. So how do we get the G-code? How do we actually make this? Well, that's super easy as well. So let's slide the window back over here. You can see that it gives you the preview and it shows you what your pig's gonna look like on your cutting board. And so the way that you generate the G-code is first clicking simulate here. It's gonna generate the toolpaths and show you here that it's gonna do all this toolpath work right? Um, all these different cuts. Now, one thing that we didn't change yet uh, is their cut parameters. And so you select over here, cut settings, and automatically easel sets it up as 28 inches per minute, nine inches for the plunge rate, and a cut depth of 0.028. Those are ridiculously super conservative 
cut settings. I would not recommend them at all. Uh, so what I do is I click manual here for the pocket. I'm gonna go ahead and set the feed rate at 80. 80 should work for your X carves, for your shape Ocos, or even for your Onefinity. Uh, I would go as high as maybe 120, 150, maybe even 180 on the Onefinity. I do not believe that the X carve, a stock X carve, maybe the X carve Pro can do it, but I don't think the stock X carve can go that fast. But you can certainly go into the 100 or 120 range and set the uh, plunge rate to about 45, and then set my depths per pass at 0.125. Now, generally speaking, I like to keep my cut depth uh, anywhere between uh, 50 to 100 percent of my bit diameter so because i have an eighth inch bit i'm going to set the set the cut depth at 0.125 that's pretty aggressive so if you have a machine that is not quite so rigid i would set the depths of cut a little bit lower probably at 50 percent which is 0.06 to five in this case. So I have found the depth of cut for the less rigid machines influences the outcomes a lot more than feed rate. You can cut fairly fast, but if you're cutting too deep, the machine just flexes too much and causes all sorts of problems. So I would definitely start with checking your depth of cut and influencing your depth of cut if you are getting some strange results out of your machine. So there you go. We have changed our cut settings here. I'm gonna click simulate again, and you can see that now, instead of being three hours, like it was before down here, it is now 13 minutes, which is very reasonable for a cut. So now we have RG code created for our pocket. The way that we get access to that G-code is we just go into project here and we say download G-code and then it downloads the G-code to your computer. Uh, so now we need to do exactly the same thing for the inlay here. I'm going to click on the inlay. I'm going to uh, check our cut settings here. Go under manual again. Now for inlay, I like to go a little bit slower uh, just to increase the likelihood that I'm not gonna have any issues with the inlay that would create gaps that would be noticeable in the inlay. So here we're gonna do uh, 60 inches per minute uh, at 30 plunge rate and then the depth of cut here. Let's go with 625, 50% of the depth of, uh, of the radius of the bit. That just uh, more or less gives us a little less uh, stress on the bit, which would, should make the inlay a little bit more accurate. And then we'll click cut settings, click simulate here, and you can see that it's really only going to take two minutes, so it's super easy peasy. So now let's go ahead and click uh, project, select download RG code, go back over to our project, uh, download our G code. And what it's done is now it has downloaded a file that is named inlay and pocket. So you know when you're on your machine, uh, which cut you're doing by the name of the file. That is why I changed the name of those work pieces and separated it out. So now if you have a Onefinity, you take those files, you upload it to your controller, and then you configure your machine for your cut. If you have something like an X-Carve, you can actually cut directly from easel here by connecting your machine to easel, and then you simply just select go from the website. That is super easy. The only downside of that really is that you have to have your computer on and you have to have your computer tethered to your X-Carve the entire time, but it does make it a lot easier than something like, uh, you know, the Onefinity where you have to take an extra step or even the shape Oco where you have to take your file and then stick it on that external controller with an SD card or a USB stick or something like that. All right, well, that was it. I know that that was a whirlwind tour of Easel and how to get all this done, but it really is that simple. So I do intend to make this project. So hopefully by the time this video goes live or at some point uh, later, we can show off the project, but it is really just that easy with Easel. I really do find it one of the most intuitive, one of the most approachable softwares, uh, really available for CAM or CAD. It's a great beginner tool and doing some really amazing projects with these inlays with some super simple techniques like this, I think really produce results that really are stunning for new users and experienced users as well. All right. Well, that was a lot. So I know it was rapid fire. So if you have any questions or any comments, please leave your comments down below. I'll be happy to answer them. If you want another video showing how to take PNGs or JPEGs and turning those into a vector so you can do inlays as well, I'll be happy to answer those questions as well. All right. Once again, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for getting this far in the video. And don't forget to be inspired.
Hi, hello, I'm the Cyber Reef Guru. Thank you so much for watching. Today I am going to take a video. No, I'm not going to take a video today. <laughs>